Hello, and welcome to the next video in my series on basic statistics. Now, a few things before we get started. Number one, if you're watching this video because you are struggling in a class right now, I want you to stay positive and keep your head up. If you're watching this, it means you've accomplished quite a bit in your educational career up to this point. You're very smart, and you may have just hit a temporary rough patch. Now, I know with the right amount of hard work, practice, and patience, you can get through it. I have faith in you. Many other people around you have faith in you. So, so should you. Number two, if you like the video, please give it a thumbs up. Share it with classmates or colleagues or put it on a playlist, because that does encourage me to keep making them. On the flip side, if you think there is something I can do better, please leave a constructive comment below the video, and I will try to incorporate those ideas into future ones. And finally, just keep in mind that these videos are meant for individuals who are relatively new to stats. So I am just going over basic concepts, and I will be doing so in a very slow, deliberate manner. Not only do I want you to understand what's going on, but also why. So all that being said, let's go ahead and get started. So this video is the next in our series on bivariate relationships. And remember that bivariate literally means two variables, bivariate. In the previous video, we talked in great depth about what covariance is and what it isn't for that matter. And we hand worked a covariance problem. So we actually did the calculations by hand so you can see where all the terms fit in and sort of its structure. Now, of course, statistical packages and even Microsoft Excel can calculate a covariance matrix for you. But there is a caveat to that that I will discuss at the end. So basically, this video is about the anatomy or the structure of a covariance matrix. And the reason I'm doing this video is because the covariance matrix plays an extremely important role in disciplines such as finance and statistical process control and things of that nature. So the covariance matrix is extremely important. It's also extremely helpful because it makes very tedious calculations much, much easier. So let's go ahead and learn about the covariance matrix. That's a quick reminder that covariance itself is just one of a family of statistical measures that we use to analyze the linear relationship between two variables. So we're interested in how two variables behave as a pair. Now we have covariance. I'm sure you've also heard of correlation and you may have even heard of linear regression. And the reality is that all these measures are very closely related. So the covariance and the correlation are very closely related. Linear regression is closely related to both of those. But right now we're focusing on covariance because I personally think it's often forgotten in stats classes and it actually comes up in other areas, like I said. So we're gonna go ahead and give it some time. And then correlation and linear regression are things that people often have heard of. But in all cases, it's about the relationship between two variables. So basically it's simply a descriptive measure of this linear relationship, or it may tell us that there is no linear relationship. We're focusing on the sign of the value, not really the number we get, get back, unless it's at or close to zero. So a positive value indicates an increasing linear relationship, whereas a negative value for the covariance indicates a decreasing linear relationship. So it's all about the sign of the covariance that is calculated or given to you. You're looking for a negative or a positive. Now a covariance at or around zero indicates that there's probably not a linear relationship between the two. So look for the sign and whether or not it is at or near zero. Now just a reminder that the covariance does not tell us anything about the strength of the relationship, only whether or not it's positive, negative, or at or around zero. 
the strength of the linear relationship is dealt with with correlation, which of course we'll get to probably in the next video. So I'm going to walk you through just a basic example of what to look for and how to interpret and understand a covariance matrix. Now in this example, I'm going to use data from four variables. And I'm just going to generally call them x1, x2, x3, and x4. And there are 20 measures or 20 values in each variable. Now for now, the statistics of interest that you know we want to look at are the mean, the variance, and the standard deviation for all four variables. Now the software package I use to do this is SPSS. Now some students are going to use SAS, SAS. Some students will use Minitab. Um, some classes will have you use a language or a program called R, but they can all do the same thing for you. Now I use SPSS because that was sort of what I was raised on in my graduate work. But basically they will all give you the same information. So on the left you can see all four variables, x1, x2, x3, and x4. So our n is 20. Those are the numbers of observations we have for each one. Now in the middle we have the mean for each variable. So variable x1 has a mean of 9.955. x2 has a mean of 20 and so on and so forth. Then we have the standard error of the mean, which is important in other cases, not really for this one. But then we have the standard deviation of each variable. So for x1, the standard deviation is 1.00393. And then we have the variance for each variable. So again, for x1, that's 1.008. And those are important when we're talking about the covariance matrix. Okay, so let's talk about an extremely viable tool. So a lot of students I work with, and even my classmates, are really gung-ho about getting the data into SPSS or whatever else, and just running the numbers. But one of the most important things, the most helpful things you can do at first, when you're looking at bivariate relationships, is printing out or doing a matrix of scatter plots. So what is that? Well, they look like this. And what they are, it's a matrix of a scatter plot for each variable pair. So one thing I want to point out is that the bottom half or the top half, depending on how you look at it, is sort of a duplicate of the other. So you only really need to look at one half above or below the diagonal. So it's a figure that plots each variable against every other variable. So if you look there at the top, along the diagonal, what we have are summary statistics for each variable itself. So the little histograms in there are just representations of the distribution of each individual variable. So x1, x1, x2, x2, and so forth. But what we're really interested in are the actual scatter plots. So if you look at the intersection of x1, the row, and the column, x2, that is a scatter plot, a very generic scatter plot of the relationship between those two variables. And of course, if we go to the row x1 and then over to x3, that is a scatter plot of x1 and x3. So you can kind of see how this works. And it's extremely helpful just to eyeball this sort of matrix to see what relationships you might have, what kind of relationships you might be looking out for. So look for linear relationships in this matrix of scatter plots. Now right now, based on this, which two variables seem to have an obvious positive linear relationship? Well, if you said x1 and x2, that would be correct. Now again, most of the real world data we work with looks like the other scatter plots, where it's hard to see any discernible pattern. Now they're there, but it's hard to see. Now, x1 and x2, it's very obvious that there is a positive linear relationship between those two. But again, when you're dealing with several variables, this is an easy way to take a quick look at your data and see what relationships may or may not exist. 
So let's talk about the actual covariance matrix, which of course is the idea of this video. So here is our descriptive statistics chart again. Now in SPSS, we can generate a covariance matrix. And here it is. So this is the whole point of the video. Here is our covariance matrix. Now I want to point out something very important here that a lot of people don't really get when talking about the covariance matrix. So I want to draw your attention to the variance column in the descriptive statistics box. So we have a variance of 1.008 for x1, a variance of 0.918 for x2, etc. Now look at the diagonal in the covariance matrix. What do you notice? They're the exact same thing. So the diagonal of a covariance matrix provides the variance of each individual variable. It's basically a variable's covariance with itself. So the diagonal is the same thing as the variance. The off-diagonal entries in the matrix provide the covariance between each individual pair. So if you look at the intersection of x1, the row, and the column, x2, you'll see 0.895. Well, that is the covariance between x1 and x2. So the variance is along the diagonal, and the covariances are off diagonal. So just to make that clear and blow it up nice and big, you can see in the covariance matrix, the variances go along the diagonal. And again, that's basically each variable's covariance with itself, which is the same thing as the variance. Now also remember that the standard deviation is simply the square root of the variance. So based on this covariance matrix, you can actually calculate the standard deviation as well. So sometimes just to save time, you can actually do a covariance matrix and other things in stats that you can find other information from. But I just wanted to point out that of course the standard deviation is the square root of the variance, so you could get it from this chart. Now as far as the covariances, those are in the off diagonal regions. So with the variances along the diagonal, and then the covariances in the other cells. So you can see the intersection of x1 and x2, well that's the covariance of x1 and x2, the covariance of x1 and x3 next to that, and so on and so forth. And again, I've blacked out the other cells because they are just duplicates of sort of the diagonal. So the covariance of x1 and x2 is the same as the covariance of x2 and x1. It's just duplicate. Now this is my Microsoft Excel warning, and this is a famous problem Microsoft Excel has when calculating covariances. So on the left, I have the output for SPSS. On the right is the output for covariance in Microsoft Excel. Now what do you notice? The numbers are totally different. They're close to each other, but none of them are the same. Well, why is that? Now the reason that is is because Microsoft Excel computes covariance using the population covariance formula, which has a denominator of n instead of the sample covariance with a denominator of n minus 1. Now again, in the previous video, I walked you through those formulas. So if you want to look, take a look at them, look at the video before this one. But SPSS and other stats packages are going to use a denominator of n minus 1, whereas Excel uses a denominator of n, which is the population covariance. So what can you do if all you have is Microsoft Excel? Now to have Excel, have the Excel output match the what I would consider the proper SPSS output or mini tab or whatever else it might be, you have to multiply each cell by n divided by n minus 1. And of course that will give you a number slightly over 1. It's kind of like a correction factor, I guess you can think of it. So in our case this would be 20, which is n, divided by 19, which is n minus 1. So that's 1 1.053. So to make our Microsoft Excel covariance matrix look like the SPSS one, we will multiply each cell in the Microsoft Excel version by 
So for example, if we took the covariance between X2 and X1 in the Microsoft Excel, we have 0 0.850. Now if we multiply that by 1.053, we have the proper covariance, which is 0.895. So again, you just if you're using Excel and you're freaking out because you're getting the wrong answers, that's why. Okay, so that is our brief look at the covariance matrix. And again, it's just an extension of bivariate relationships, and I bring it up because the covariance matrix does play a very important role in other areas like finance and statistical process control or two I can think of right off the top of my head, but I know it comes up in other things. And unfortunately, in many stats classes, covariance and the covariance matrix are just skipped right over. So when you talk about bivariate relationships, the covariance and its matrix are skipped right over and they go on to correlation. So I think it's very important to understand what the covariance matrix is, where it comes from, and how you can learn from it as far as you know learning about your data. Okay, so just remember if you're struggling in a class right now, I want you to stay positive and keep your head up. You're smart and talented, and this just may be a temporary rough patch. So keep having faith in yourself because I know everyone else around you has faith in you. Number two, if you like the video, please give it a thumbs up. Share it with colleagues or classmates. Put it on a playlist. That does encourage me to keep making them since I know they are beneficial. And finally, if you think there's something I can do better, leave a constructive comment below the video, and I'll try to take those ideas into account when I make new ones. So just remember, and probably most important to me, if you're on here learning, try to improve yourself as a student, or as an asset at your place of work, that is what really matters. So, thank you very much for watching. I wish you all the best in your studies or at your place of work. I look forward to seeing you again next time.